Hi, this is Kevin Patton with a brief preview podcast for episode 31, which I'm calling the Elephant Episode. In it, I discuss a new discovery regarding how memories are formed in our brain. Well, that's in human brains. Well, and I suppose also in elephant brains. And yes, elephants do have very good memories. Well, at least that's my recollection. Specifically, this update on memory focuses on postsynaptic receptors and their role in forming memories. And as you probably already suspect, the featured topic will focus on elephants. Longtime listeners of this podcast know of my background in zoos and circuses with wild animals, including elephants. It turns out that elephants have a lot they can teach us about human structure and function. And everybody loves elephants, right? What an engaging way to spice up our teaching of human structure and function. So listen to the next episode if you want to hear a few elephant stories. You know, if you use the TAP app, you'll get each episode, including these previews, 12 hours earlier than the rest of the world. Just go to your device's app store and search for the a and Professor. It's that easy. I want to briefly mention that among the bonus content you'll find there is a list of URLs compiled for us by our guest in Episode 28, media professor and copyright expert Barbara Waxer. It's a list of several curated catalogs of media, such as photos, illustrations, and diagrams, specifically for a and that we can use in our teaching. Maybe some of you have already found it. It's been there a few weeks. This is a great gift. Thanks, Barbara. And a very useful tool for teaching AMP. Check it out under the PDF tab in the TAP app. I had fun dissecting a couple of terms in the last podcast preview, so I thought I'd do it again. I have two terms this time. The first one is pachyderm. And that's a term that refers to elephants and sometimes to related animals. And it's based on an old, obsolete um, term that's used in taxonomy, but it's still used today, even by biologists, to refer to elephants. And if you break down the word pachyderm, the first part, pachyt, which is P-A-C-H-Y, means thick or large or massive. And then the second part, derm, D-R-M, well, you already know that means skin. So you put it together, pachyderm means thick skin. And elephants do have eh, kind of thick skin, but then again, so do humans, right? I mean, on the bottom of our feet, that's pretty thick. And elephants, they have very thin areas of their skin and very thick areas of skin as well, just like humans do. It's just that in some elephants, particularly African elephants, there are a few areas where the keratinized layer gets very, very thick. And we're going to talk about that in episode 31. There are a few science and medical terms that use the term packet. You don't run across them very frequently, at least I don't. One is packetine, which literally means thick threads. And that's the third stage of prophase one of meiosis. Now, I don't get that detailed in my description of meiosis in AMP, but if one were to get that detailed, you would run across the term pachydine, and that's pachytine, and that's the uh, phase during which, or the, the stage of prophase one, during which the chromosomes thicken. So that makes sense that you'd use a term that literally means thick threads. Another term that uses pacha is pachymetry, where you use a pachymeter, which is a device that measures the thickness of the cornea. Now, the pachymeters in use today are usually ultrasound. In the olden days, they were mostly based on the optical properties of the cornea, but that's a medical use of the term pacha, or the word part pacha. The other big term that we want to dissect, or that I want to dissect, whether you want to or not, is integument. And that's based on the Latin word integumentum which literally means a covering. And if you break down the word parts, it's in, uh, which literally means in or upon, and teg, T-E-G, which means cover, and then that ending, that suffix, ment, 
um, refers to the result of an action. It's a uh, it's meant to be a noun, but it's a noun that's the result of an action. And so you put it all together, and you get well, you know, the result of putting a cover upon, which <laughs> a simpler way of saying that is a covering. So that makes sense. The integument is a covering. We're going to talk a little bit about that in the episode as well. The AMP Professor podcast is sponsored by the Human Anatomy and Physiology Society. Now is a great time to start thinking about going to the annual conference at the end of next May in Portland, Oregon. Go to the website at theapprofessor.org slash HAPS to find details, including the greatly reduced early bird rates for registration. That's theapprofessor.org slash HAPS. We'll have a couple of new book recommendations in the AMP Professor Book Club, and they both relate to the content of episode 31. And they're two of my favorite books that relate to human anatomy and physiology. The first one <laughs> is about the sense of smell, and I'm laughing because the reason it came to mind is because, well, we're going to be talking about elephants, and well, that's one of the things that comes just a mind when I think about elephants is how they smell. And maybe you've had that experience at a zoo or a circus somewhere, and you know what elephants smell like. And the, the name of the book is called The Scent of Desire, Discovering Our Enigmatic Sense of Smell. And it's written by Rachel Hers, and she's a neuroscientist at Brown University and Boston College, and she specializes in perception and emotion. As a matter of fact, she writes a college textbook called Sensation and Perception. And in the book, which is a fun book to read, she tells the story of a very early memory of smell that she has. When she was a child, she got to go out to the countryside to visit her grandmother. And her earliest memory of that is her mother driving her out from the city where she lived into the country. And as soon as they got to a rural area, she rolled down the window and said, ah, don't you just love that country air? Well, just at that moment, they both got this strong whiff of skunk odor. And I think her mother was probably being ironic as she said that, but to the little girl, the little Rachel, soon to become a neuroscientist, she took that literally and felt like her mother was saying that's a pleasant odor. So in her mind, the odor of a skunk was always associated with a pleasant memory. And that's how I feel when I smell elephants. And so when I walk onto a circus lot or into a zoo and I smell elephants, I boy, I get happy. I get a smile on my face. Everybody else is holding their nose and, and uh, having a sour look on their face, but not me. Well, Rachel Hers in her book explains the how and the why of that and a whole bunch of other things related to smell that is just fascinating. I think every A&P teacher ought to read it. Another one of my favorite books is a book called Receptors by Richard Restack, who has written a lot on neuroscience and has even done a PBS special and so on. And this is an old book, too. It goes back to 1994, but it's still a great book. And it's a, a brief, uh, easy read. And it's really it's written for uh, popular consumption, so it's not overly technical, but it goes through the history of our understanding of how synapses work with a focus on the story of receptors, how they were discovered, and why they're important, and some different aspects of them. I love this book so much, I used to require my AMP students and also my physiology students to read this book. And so that's Receptors by Richard Rustack. I have links to both books in the show notes, and at the episode page at theapprofessor.org. AAA, the American Association of Anatomists, has funded the searchable transcript for this podcast preview and for the full episode. You can find them at anatomy.org. The full elephant episode, episode 31, will become available Monday at midday or Sunday midnight if you have the TAP app. Talk to you again soon.